couple of weeks ago, Zach and I had a chance to drive the all-new Ford Taurus, which was basically an updated Ford 500 that was rebadged as a Taurus. But not only do you get one Ford Taurus, now you get two and we'll throw in the knife set. At this rate, all Ford vehicles will be called the Taurus. This is the latest incarnation of the Taurus. It's called the Taurus X, and in a previous life, last year, it was called the Freestyle Crossover Utility Vehicle. Now the sedan and the crossover share the same basic platform and they're both large family vehicles, but I have a feeling that this new Taurus X is going to appeal to a larger group of buyers. The three bar grille found on other Ford products makes its way onto this newly updated vehicle along with the restyled hood, front fenders, headlamps, fog lights and more. The back receives Ford Edge inspired tail lamps, dual chrome tipped exhaust and a new overall design. The Taurus X is sold in two trim levels only, the SEL or the Limited, and both are sold as either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. We have the all-wheel drive here. What's nice if you get the Limited, there's some tasty upgrades like standard backup sensors for parking and a power lift gate. What I really like about the Taurus X at the back is the cargo area. When the third row of seats are folded, the floor is perfectly flat and loading things in isn't that much of a lift and there's a cover on the rear bumper to stop it from scratching. Lifting the third row of seats up is really a snap. You just pull one handle and the seat backs go up and what you get is a huge deep cargo well just like a minivan. This is a really good design. Zach, that's just half of it. There's another great feature on the second row of seats. It's called the flip and fold system. With just a press of the button, the seat flips and folds all on its own, and it makes getting into that third row so much easier. That's another great design. The Taurus X is a six or seven passenger crossover, and when equipped with bucket seats in the second row, can come with a very large storage and drink console in the middle. Or the X can be ordered without this feature for better access to the back. The third row is higher off the floor, so outward visibility is great, and there's plenty of leg room in the back, even for adults. The Taurus X is one of nine new Ford vehicles to feature their all-new sync system, which allows the driver to have hands-free control over their Bluetooth phone or their MP3 player. To see how it works, go to our website and look it up. It's very cool technology. The biggest criticism of the all-new Ford Edge was the use of materials on the interior, and this new X isn't any better. Sure, everything is located in the right spot and it works well enough, but the dash and door panels are made of a cheap looking and feeling plastic that lets this well-designed vehicle down, which is too bad. The interior is well equipped though with power windows and doors, air conditioning, leather steering wheel, power seats and tilt steering, but telescopic steering is not offered. Not only does this X have all airbags, standard ABS, and stability control, it is a top safety pick from the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, and it received five stars in all four government crash tests, making this the safest crossover vehicle in North America. The outgoing Freestyle had a 3-liter V6 with 203 horsepower, and it was matched to a continuously variable transmission. That's all gone now. Now, the Taurus X has the same engine transmission drivetrain as the new Ford Edge. A 3.5 liter V6 does the work and increases the power to 265, a bump of 62 horsepower. All that power now goes through a six-speed automatic transmission to either the front wheels or optional all-wheel drive system. I really enjoy driving the Taurus X. It's got lots of power, the steering's responsive, and it corners really nicely. I also like the acceleration. It's smooth off the line and when passing on the highway. Now, Lacey already mentioned the all-wheel drive system in the Taurus X, which has the ability to shift up to 100% of the torque from the engine to either the front or rear axle, depending on how much traction is needed. And it has another neat feature. Under hard acceleration, torque will be sent to the rear wheels even before the front wheels begin to slip. Crossover vehicles are all the rage. They move a family around in comfort with all their stuff and don't use too much fuel. 
The Taurus X isn't as handsome as the Ford Edge, but it has a third row of seats and more interior space. It'll be interesting to see if this vehicle will pick up some extra buyers now that Chrysler has dropped the Pacifica crossover. I gotta tell you, I'm kind of taken with this Taurus X the way it drives. We've had the Ford Edge crossover to drive. We recently had the Taurus sedan, the old Ford 500 to drive. And out of the three, I like this one the best. Now the Taurus sedan really didn't do a lot for me. It was okay. The Ford Edge is still a little higher. What I like about the Taurus X is a little lower to the ground. Handling is actually pretty good. This vehicle, where it shines, is out on the open highway. It just cruises along absolutely effortlessly. This new three and a half liter V6 matched to the six-speed automatic transmission has transformed the freestyle. So much so, they changed the name to Taurus X. A Taurus X starts at around $34,000. If you get a fully loaded, limited all-wheel drive like we have here and throw in some toys like Navigation, it's almost $50,000. Now, the name Taurus is kind of confusing. They're using it on two different vehicles. I know people recognize the name, but it really is going to confuse. I call this one the X. So, does the X hit the spot? Well, Zach, I like the increased horsepower. I love the comfy, smooth ride. The interior is very functional and there's tons of room. And I really like that flip and fold system. It makes getting into the third row of seats so much easier. Now on the downside, the one thing that really stuck out for me was the styling. It's just too boxy and looks too much like a station wagon for me. Zach? Well, I really do like a lot about this vehicle. First of all, it's probably one of the best crossovers that I've ever driven. It's so functional, especially the third row of seats. A lot of these crossover, the third row of seats, really aren't that usable for full-size people. This one, you can get big people in the back. And the way that the storage area is created, like a big well, they're like a minivan, it really is brilliant. And when you combine all of that with the improved engine that Lacey mentioned, more horsepower, great six-speed automatic transmission, smooth and comfortable yet responsive ride, it really is a good overall package. On the downside, I agree with Lacey. The styling is a little bit of a miss. I'm not a fan of chrome wheels. It just looks too American, if you know what I mean. They could have made this vehicle look a little bit cooler. There's no telescopic steering even offered. And I don't get the name, Taurus X. We've got two Tauruses now, a sedan, which is the updated Ford 500, and now the Taurus X, which is the redone freestyle. They're really gonna confuse people, but both of them are roughly around the same price. So if you were gonna spend money and buy a Taurus, which Taurus would you get? You know what, Zach? Hands down, I would take the Taurus X. Me too. Put an X down for me on the X. Want to buy a new car but can't decide? Go to driving.ca and do your own research by using the comparison tool.